Hey everyone, how can we turn this raw shot into this final image? Simply with a few quick Photoshop adjustments. So make sure to grab the raw file from the link in the description and now let's jump into it. Before we do anything, let me change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will just bring up the base saturation a bit and then I do want to expand the basic panel. Before working on the exposure itself, I do want to work on the white balance, making the colors look a little bit more natural. That means right now you can see a very heavy blue color cast. So let me just turn up the temperature a bit. And at the same time, to fix the purple color cast, I'm going to bring down the tint very, very slightly. Compared to before, this looks much better. Now let's work on the exposure. First off, I'm going to simply raise the exposure itself. This will give us some nice brightness, but at the same time, we are losing some details in the clouds. So to fix that, I'm going to bring down the highlights. Perfect. And just to brighten up the shot a little more, I'm going to also increase the blacks. As I want this shot to be sharp and clear, I'm going to increase the texture. And I'm going to add some clarity. And finally, let's also add some vibrance to make the shot more saturated. Wonderful. So that's the image after the base adjustments. You can see we do have a lot more brightness going on. It's a lot more vibrant, but somehow the image is still missing contrast. As you probably have seen the thumbnail of this video, we're going to enhance that by making use of color luminance. What this means is we're going to target specific color ranges of the image and either make them brighter or darker. For the first step of this, I'm going to use a bit of masking first. So let's open up the masking panel. And to target colors, we are going to, of course, use a color range mask. So click on that. And with that color range mask, I want to select the blue part of the sky just by clicking in here. You can see we have a pretty good selection right here. We can refine it some more by holding down the shift key and clicking in different blue areas of the image, just selecting some more blue tones. Now, we also have a bit of those clouds selected down here, which I'm not a big fan of. I do want to modify this mask some more. So let's click on subtract and choose a linear gradient. With that, I'm going to drag up a linear gradient going from the bottom to the top. And what this does is at the bottom, this effect won't be as strong as at the top. And with this color range mask, I want to bring down the exposure quite heavily. So in the end, we have a dark blue sky at the very top, while the bottom part is pretty much unchanged, which creates a really, really cool contrast rich effect, almost like using a polarization filter. We can further tweak this by just applying another color range mask. Again, I'm going to click some in the blue part like this. And again, I'm making use of that subtract function using a linear gradient and going further up the top with it. Just like that to get a very smooth gradient from light to dark. Again, I'm just bringing down the exposure even further. Just like that. And you can see with just two masks, we have really changed the image a lot. We have a lot more contrast going on since the bright clouds were not affected by the color range mask. So that's a really cool effect, but let's continue. I do want to create a simple linear gradient for the very near foreground. And that's because I want to create some kind of vignetting effect, making the foreground right here a bit darker. So again, I'm just going to use some negative exposure right here. Not too much though. And I am going to create yet another linear gradient for this corner right there. And again, just bring down the exposure for that vignetting effect. Perfect, that looks great. Now I'm almost done with the masking stuff, but the left side is kind of dark. It does look unnatural, so I want to change that. In that case, I'm using a radial gradient, make it really big almost covering the whole image like that. Maybe rotate it a bit. And then let's bring up the exposure. Much better. 
So that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me toggle the visibility so you can see before and after. Much, much better. Now we did target the blue color luminance. However, we can also target the green luminance in the foreground. And the reason for me not to do that with masks is because there's a second way and that's going all the way down into the color mixer. Here you can see I'm already in the luminance tab. And since this area consists of green and yellow tones, we can push both sliders to affect the brightness of the color. This means I'm going to bring up the yellow luminance and watch how the foreground will get brighter. At the same time, let me bring up the green luminance. And again, we are just making the grass in the foreground brighter this way. At the same time, if you want, you can make the sky even darker by bringing down the blue luminance, but I think that would be too much. The reason for me not to bring down the blue luminance in the beginning without using masks is because I want to have a gradient going from bright at the bottom part to dark at the top part. But by using the blue luminance, I would affect all the blue color tones in the image. So it does make sense to use masking for that part up there. Let's continue in the saturation tab since I want to work on the saturation a bit as well, which means I'm going to bring down the yellow saturation as well as the green saturation and the blue saturation. All right, just wanna keep it a little more subtle here. And I think that's it for the color mixer. So what's left now is the calibration tab for the color grading. Here, I just want to bring down the blue primary hue and maybe bringing up the saturation some more, just like that. I think that looks great. Now we're almost done with the raw adjustments. Just one more thing. And of course, that's the sharpening in the details tab. So here, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking. And by holding down the Alt key, you can see where the sharpening will be applied. So I'm targeting the tree in the foreground and some of the clouds like this. And then just raise the amount of sharpening. Perfect. And that's the image after the raw adjustments. Compared to before, you can see we have a completely different image. Pretty happy with this, but we can tweak it some more. So let's open up this image in Photoshop. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of that vignetting up there. For that, I'm just going to use the clone stem tool. Actually, no, let me use the spot healing brush and just brush over it like this and the vignetting is gone. Next, I'm not happy with that subtle red color cast in the clouds. I do want to make them white and puffy. So I'm going to use a hue and saturation adjustment layer here in the menu. I don't want to change the master settings, but I want to head into the reds and just bring down the saturation. All right, that looks good, but we have some strange edges around these clouds. That's because that's mostly magenta. So in that drop down menu, let's choose magentas and bring down the saturation as well. And just like that, we have fixed the color cast. Now looking at the tree, you can see we are losing some saturation in it as well. You could mask it out using the layer mask of the hue and saturation adjustment layer, but I think it looks a bit more natural this way. So I'm going to keep it that way. Finally, I do want to add a little more contrast. And of course I could use something like the curves adjustment layer or something similar, but I want to check the Nick collection plugin for that. So I'm going to merge those two layers by selecting them and hitting Ctrl E. Then let's head into filter, Nick collection, color effects pro four. Here you can already see, I set up the pro contrast filter, which has a really, really good effect on the image, as you can see when I'm turning it off. And also I'm just using subtle amounts here again. And with those settings, let's hit OK. All right, and here we have the finished image. So as you can see, making use of color luminance is very helpful if you have an image with very clear color tones, like in this case, with the blue sky and the green foreground. You can add a lot more contrast by applying these settings and thus just make your images pop a lot more. So if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.